A hydrogen vehicle is a vehicle that uses hydrogen as its onboard fuel for motive power. Hydrogen vehicles include hydrogen-fueled space rockets, as well as automobiles and other transportation vehicles. The power plants of such vehicles convert the chemical energy of hydrogen to mechanical energy either by burning hydrogen in an internal combustion engine, or, more commonly, by reacting hydrogen with oxygen in a fuel cell to run electric motors. Widespread use of hydrogen for fueling transportation is a key element of a proposed hydrogen economy. As of 2016, there are three models of hydrogen cars publicly available in select markets the Toyota Mirai, the Hyundai Nexo, and the Honda Clarity. Several other companies are working to develop hydrogen cars. As of 2014, 95% of hydrogen is made from natural gas. It can be produced by thermochemical or pyrolytic means using renewable feedstocks, but that is an expensive process. Renewable electricity can however be used to power the conversion of water into hydrogen, integrated wind to hydrogen, power to gas, plants, using electrolysis of water, are exploring technologies to deliver costs low enough, and quantities great enough, to compete with hydrogen production using natural gas. The drawbacks of hydrogen use are high carbon emissions intensity when produced from natural gas, capital cost burden, low energy content per unit volume at ambient conditions, production and compression of hydrogen, and the investment required in filling stations to dispense hydrogen. Vehicles <inaudible> 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 Automobiles, buses, forklifts, trains, PHB bicycles, canal boats, cargo bikes, golf carts, motorcycles, wheelchairs, ships, airplanes, submarines, and rockets can already run on hydrogen, in various forms. NASA used hydrogen to launch space shuttles into space. A working toy model car runs on solar power, using a regenerative fuel cell to store energy in the form of hydrogen and oxygen gas. It can then convert the fuel back into water to release the solar energy. Since the advent of hydraulic fracturing the key concern for hydrogen fuel cell vehicles is consumer and public policy confusion concerning the adoption of natural gas-powered hydrogen vehicles with heavy hidden emissions to the detriment of environmentally friendly transportation, a land speed record for a hydrogen-powered vehicle of 286.476 miles per hour was set by Ohio State University University's Buckeye Bullet 2, which achieved a flying mile speed of 280.007 miles per hour, 450.628 kilometers per hour, at the Bonneville Salt Flats in August 2008. A record of 207.297 miles per hour, 333.612 kilometers per hour, was set by a prototype Ford Fusion Hydrogen 999 fuel cell race car at the Bonneville Salt Flats in August 2007, using a large compressed oxygen tank to increase power. Topic: <laughs> Automobiles. As of 2018, there are three hydrogen cars publicly available in select markets, the Toyota Mirai, the Hyundai Nexo, and the Honda Clarity. In 2013 the Hyundai Tucson FCEV was the first commercially mass-produced hydrogen fuel cell vehicle in the world. It could run in the range of nearly 600 kilometers. Hyundai Nexo succeeded it in 2018. Toyota launched its first production fuel cell vehicle, FCV, the Mirai, in Japan at the end of 2014 and began sales in California, mainly the Los Angeles area, in 2015. The car has a range of 312 miles 502 kilometers and takes about 5 minutes to refill its hydrogen tank. The initial sale price in Japan was about 7 million yen $69,000. Former European Parliament President Pat Cox estimated that Toyota would initially lose about $100,000 on each Mirai sold. Many automobile companies have introduced demonstration models in limited numbers see list of fuel cell vehicles and list of hydrogen internal combustion engine vehicles. 
One disadvantage of hydrogen compared to other automobile fuels is its low density. In 2013, BMW leased hydrogen technology from Toyota, and a group formed by Ford Motor Company, Daimler AG, and Nissan announced a collaboration on hydrogen technology development. By 2017, however, Daimler had abandoned hydrogen vehicle development, and most of the automobile companies developing hydrogen cars had switched their focus to battery electric vehicles. <laughs> buses Fuel cell buses are being trialed by several manufacturers in different locations, for example, Ursus Lublin. The Fuel Cell Bus Club is a global fuel cell bus testing collaboration. Topic: <trams>, Trams and Trains. In March 2015, China South Rail Corporation (CSR) demonstrated the world's first hydrogen fuel cell powered tramcar at an assembly facility in Qingdao. The chief engineer of the CSR subsidiary CSR Safong Co. Ltd., Liang Jianying, said that the company is studying how to reduce the running costs of the tram. Tracks for the new vehicle have been built in seven Chinese cities. China plans to spend 200 billion yuan $32 billion through 2020 to increase tram tracks to more than 1,200 miles. In northern Germany in 2018, the first fuel cell powered Caradia Illant trains were placed into service. Excess power is stored in lithium ion batteries. <inaudible> <inaudible> Bicycles In 2007, Pearl Hydrogen Power Sources of Shanghai, China, unveiled a hydrogen bicycle at the 9th China International Exhibition on Gas Technology, Equipment, and Applications. <laughs> <laughs> Military vehicles General Motors Military Division, GM Defense, focuses on hydrogen fuel cell vehicles. Its Cirrus Silent Utility Rover Universal Superstructure is a flexible fuel cell electric platform with autonomous capabilities. Since April 2017, the U.S. Army has been testing the commercial Chevrolet Colorado ZH2 on its U.S. bases to determine the viability of hydrogen-powered vehicles in military mission tactical environments. Topic. Motorcycles and scooters ENV develops electric motorcycles powered by a hydrogen fuel cell, including the crossgauge and biplane. Other manufacturers as Vectrix are working on hydrogen scooters. Finally, hydrogen fuel cell electric hybrid scooters are being made such as the Suzuki Bergman fuel cell scooter and the Fibrid. The Bergman received whole vehicle type approval in the EU. The Taiwanese company APFCT conducted a live street test with 80 fuel cell scooters for Taiwan's Bureau of Energy. <laughs> Quads and tractors Autostudy SR, LZH do is a hydrogen-powered quad, capable of transporting one to three passengers. A concept for a hydrogen-powered tractor has been proposed. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Airplanes. Companies such as Boeing, Lang Aviation, and the German Aerospace Center pursue hydrogen as fuel for manned and unmanned airplanes. In February 2008, Boeing tested a manned flight of a small aircraft powered by a hydrogen fuel cell. Unmanned hydrogen planes have also been tested. For large passenger airplanes, the Times reported that Boeing said that hydrogen fuel cells were unlikely to power the engines of large passenger jet airplanes but could be used as backup or auxiliary power units onboard. 
In July 2010, Boeing unveiled its hydrogen powered Phantom I UAV, powered by two Ford internal combustion engines that have been converted to run on hydrogen. In Britain, the reaction engines A2 has been proposed to use the thermodynamic properties of liquid hydrogen to achieve very high speed, long distance antipodal flight by burning it in a pre cooled jet engine. Topic. Fork trucks A Heiss forklift or Heiss lift truck is a hydrogen-fueled, internal combustion engine-powered industrial forklift truck used for lifting and transporting materials. The first production Heiss forklift truck based on the Lind X39 diesel was presented at an exposition in Hanover on May 27, 2008. It used a 2.0-liter, 43 kilowatts, 58 horsepower diesel internal combustion engine converted to use hydrogen as a fuel with the use of a compressor and direct injection. A fuel cell forklift, also called a fuel cell lift truck, is a fuel cell powered industrial forklift truck. In 2013, there were over 4,000 fuel cell forklifts used in material handling in the US. The global market was estimated at 1 million fuel cell-powered forklifts per year for 2014-2016. Fleets are being operated by companies around the world. Pike Research stated in 2011 that fuel cell-powered forklifts will be the largest driver of hydrogen fuel demand by 2020. Most companies in Europe and the U.S. do not use petroleum-powered forklifts, as these vehicles work indoors where emissions must be controlled and instead use electric forklifts. Fuel cell-powered forklifts can provide benefits over battery-powered forklifts as they can be refueled in three minutes. They can be used in refrigerated warehouses, as their performance is not degraded by lower temperatures. The fuel cell units are often designed as drop-in replacements. Topic. Rockets Many large rockets use liquid hydrogen as fuel, with liquid oxygen as an oxidizer LH2, LOX. An advantage of hydrogen rocket fuel is the high effective exhaust velocity compared to kerosene, LOX or UDMH, NTO engines. According to the Tsiolkovsky rocket equation, a rocket with higher exhaust velocity uses less propellant to accelerate. Also the energy density of hydrogen is greater than any other fuel. LH2, LOX also yields the greatest efficiency in relation to the amount of propellant consumed, of any known rocket propellant. A disadvantage of LH2, LOX engines is the low density and low temperature of liquid hydrogen, which means bigger and insulated and thus heavier fuel tanks are needed. This increases the rocket's structural mass which reduces its delta V significantly. Another disadvantage is the poor storability of LH2, LOX powered rockets. Due to the constant hydrogen boil off, the rocket must be fueled shortly before launch, which makes cryogenic engines unsuitable for ICBMs and other rocket applications with the need for short launch preparations. Overall, the delta V of a hydrogen stage is typically not much different from that of a dense fueled stage, but the weight of a hydrogen stage is much less, which makes it particularly effective for upper stages, since they are carried by the lower stages. For first stages, dense fueled rockets in studies may show a small advantage, due to the smaller vehicle size and lower air drag. LH2, LOX were also used in the Space Shuttle to run the fuel cells that power the electrical systems. The byproduct of the fuel cell is water, which is used for drinking and other applications that require water in space. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Heavy trucks. In 2016, Nikola Motor Company introduced a hydrogen-powered class 8 heavy truck powered by a 320 kilowatt-hour ZV battery. Nikola plans two versions of the hydrogen-powered truck, long-haul Nikola 1 and day-cab Nikola 2. United Parcel Service began testing of a hydrogen-powered delivery vehicle in 2017. U.S. Hybrid, Toyota, and Kenworth have also announced plans to test Class 8 drayage hydrogen fuel cell trucks. <laughs> 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 
Topic: <laughs> Internal combustion vehicle Hydrogen internal combustion engine cars are different from hydrogen fuel cell cars. The hydrogen internal combustion car is a slightly modified version of the traditional gasoline internal combustion engine car. These hydrogen engines burn fuel in the same manner that gasoline engines do, the main difference is the exhaust product. Gasoline combustion results in carbon dioxide and water vapor, while the only exhaust product of hydrogen combustion is water vapor. In 1807 François-Isaac de Rivas designed the first hydrogen-fueled internal combustion engine. In 1965, Roger Billings, then a high school student, converted a Model A to run on hydrogen. In 1970 Paul Deges patented a modification to internal combustion engines which allowed a gasoline-powered engine to run on hydrogen CTFDUS 3,844,262. Mazda has developed Wankel engines burning hydrogen, which are used in the Mazda RX-8 hydrogen RE. The advantage of using an internal combustion engine, like Wankel and piston engines, is the lower cost of retooling for production. Heis forklift trucks have been demonstrated based on converted diesel internal combustion engines with direct injection. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Fuel cell. Topic: <inaudible> Fuel cell cost Hydrogen fuel cells are relatively expensive to produce, as their designs require rare substances such as platinum as a catalyst. In 2014, Toyota said it would introduce its Toyota Mirai in Japan for less than $70,000 in 2015. Former European Parliament President Pat Cox estimates that Toyota will initially lose about $100,000 on each Mirai sold. <inaudible> <inaudible> Freezing conditions The problems in early fuel cell designs at low temperatures concerning range and cold start capabilities have been addressed so that they cannot be seen as show stoppers anymore. Users in 2014 said that their fuel cell vehicles perform flawlessly in temperatures below zero, even with the heaters blasting, without significantly reducing range. Studies using neutron radiography on unassisted cold start indicate ice formation in the cathode, three stages in cold start and nafion ionic conductivity. A parameter, defined as coulomb of charge, was also defined to measure cold start capability. <inaudible> service life The service life of fuel cells is comparable to that of other vehicles. PEM service life is 7,300 hours under cycling conditions. Hydrogen Hydrogen does not exist in convenient reservoirs or deposits as do fossil fuels or helium and is produced from feedstocks such as natural gas and biomass or electrolyzed from water. A suggested benefit of large-scale deployment of hydrogen vehicles is that it could lead to decreased emissions of greenhouse gases and ozone precursors. However, as of 2014, 95% of hydrogen is made from methane. It can be produced by thermochemical or pyrolytic means using renewable feedstocks, but that is an expensive process. Renewable electricity can however be used to power the conversion of water into hydrogen, integrated wind to hydrogen, power to gas, plants, using electrolysis of water, are exploring technologies to deliver costs low enough, and quantities great enough, to compete with traditional energy sources. According to Ford Motor Company, hydrogen fuel cell vehicles would generate only three-fifths the carbon dioxide as a comparable vehicle running on gasoline blended to 10% ethanol. 
While methods of hydrogen production that do not use fossil fuel would be more sustainable, currently renewable energy represents only a small percentage of energy generated, and power produced from renewable sources can be used in electric vehicles and for non vehicle applications. The challenges facing the use of hydrogen in vehicles include chiefly its storage on board the vehicle. While the well-to-wheel efficiency for hydrogen from the least efficient manner of producing it electrolysis is less than 25%, it still exceeds that of vehicles based on internal combustion engines. Topic. Production The molecular hydrogen needed as an onboard fuel for hydrogen vehicles can be obtained through many thermochemical methods utilizing natural gas, coal, by a process known as coal gasification, liquefied petroleum gas, biomass, biomass gasification, by a process called thermolysis, or as a microbial waste product called biohydrogen or biological hydrogen production. 95% of hydrogen is produced using natural gas, and 85% of hydrogen produced is used to remove sulfur from gasoline. Hydrogen can also be produced from water by electrolysis at working efficiencies in the 50-60% range for the smaller electrolyzers and around 65-70% for the larger plants. Hydrogen can also be made by chemical reduction using chemical hydrides or aluminum. Current technologies for manufacturing hydrogen use energy in various forms, totaling between 25 and 50 percent of the higher heating value of the hydrogen fuel, used to produce, compress or liquefy, and transmit the hydrogen by pipeline or truck. Environmental consequences of the production of hydrogen from fossil energy resources include the emission of greenhouse gases, a consequence that would also result from the onboard reforming of methanol into hydrogen. Analyses comparing the environmental consequences of hydrogen production and use in fuel cell vehicles to the refining of petroleum and combustion in conventional automobile engines do not agree on whether a net reduction of ozone and greenhouse gases would result. Hydrogen production using renewable energy resources would not create such emissions, but the scale of renewable energy production would need to be expanded to be used in producing hydrogen for a significant part of transportation needs. As of 2016, 14.9% of U.S. electricity was produced from renewable sources. In a few countries, renewable sources are being used more widely to produce energy and hydrogen. For example, Iceland is using geothermal power to produce hydrogen, and Denmark is using wind. Topic. Storage Compressed hydrogen in hydrogen tanks at 350 bars 5, psi and 700 bars 10, psi is used for hydrogen tank systems in vehicles. Based on type 4 carbon composite technology, hydrogen has a very low volumetric energy density at ambient conditions, equal to about one-third that of methane. Even when the fuel is stored as liquid hydrogen in a cryogenic tank or in a compressed hydrogen storage tank, the volumetric energy density megajoules per liter is small relative to that of gasoline. Hydrogen has three times higher specific energy by mass compared to gasoline 143 megajoules per kilogram versus 46.9 megajoules per kilogram. In 2011, scientists at Los Alamos National Laboratory and University of Alabama, working with the U.S. Department of Energy, found a single-stage method for recharging ammonia borane, a hydrogen storage compound. In 2018, researchers at CSIRO in Australia powered a Toyota Mirai and Hyundai Nexo with hydrogen separated from ammonia using a membrane technology. Ammonia is easier to transport safely in tankers than pure hydrogen. Topic. Infrastructure The hydrogen infrastructure consists of hydrogen-equipped filling stations, which are supplied with hydrogen via compressed hydrogen tube trailers, liquid hydrogen tank trucks or dedicated on-site production, and some industrial hydrogen pipeline transport. 
The distribution of hydrogen fuel for vehicles throughout the U.S. would require new hydrogen stations that would cost between $20 billion in the U.S., $4.6 billion in the EU, and half trillion dollars in the USA. As of 2018, there were 40 publicly accessible hydrogen refueling stations in the U.S., most of which are in located in California, compared with 19,000 electric charging stations. By 2017, there were 91 hydrogen fueling stations in Japan. Topic: <laughs> Codes and standards. Hydrogen codes and standards, as well as codes and technical standards for hydrogen safety and the storage of hydrogen, have been identified as an institutional barrier to deploying hydrogen technologies and developing a hydrogen economy. To enable the commercialization of hydrogen in consumer products, new codes and standards must be developed and adopted by federal, state and local governments. Topic. Official support Topic. U.S. initiatives In 2003, George W. Bush announced an initiative to promote hydrogen-powered vehicles. In 2009, President Obama and his Department of Energy Secretary Stephen Chu stripped the funding of fuel cell technology due to their belief that the technology was still decades away. Under heavy criticism, the funding was partially restored. In 2014 the Obama administration announced they want to speed up production and development of hydrogen-powered vehicles. The Department of Energy planned to spread a $7.2 million investment among the states of Georgia, Kansas, Pennsylvania, and Tennessee to support projects that fuel vehicles and support power systems. The Center for Transportation and the Environment, FedEx Express, Air Products and Chemicals, and Sprint have invested in the development of fuel cells. Fuel cells could also be used in handling equipment such as forklifts as well as telecommunications infrastructure. Senator Byron L. Dorgan stated in 2013, the Energy and Water Appropriations Bill makes investments in our nation's efforts to develop safe, homegrown energy sources that will reduce our reliance on foreign oil. And, because ongoing research and development is necessary to develop game-changing technologies, this bill also restores funding for hydrogen energy research. In June 2013, the U.S. Department of Energy gave $9 million in grants to speed up technology development, $4.5 million for advanced fuel cell membranes, $3 million to 3M Corporation to work on membranes with improved durability and performance, and $1.5 million to the Colorado School of Mines for work on simpler and more affordable fuel cell membranes. Other efforts In Japan, hydrogen is mainly to be sourced from outside Japan. Norway plans a series of hydrogen refueling stations along the main roads. Criticism Critics claim the time frame for overcoming the technical and economic challenges to implementing wide-scale use of hydrogen cars is likely to last for at least several decades, and hydrogen vehicles may never become broadly available. They claim that the focus on the use of the hydrogen car is a dangerous detour from more readily available solutions to reducing the use of fossil fuels in vehicles. In May 2008, Wired News reported that Experts say it will be 40 years or more before hydrogen has any meaningful impact on gasoline consumption or global warming, and we can't afford to wait that long. In the meantime, fuel cells are diverting resources from more immediate solutions. Critiques of hydrogen vehicles are presented in the 2006 documentary, Who Killed the Electric Car? According to former U.S. Department of Energy official Joseph Rahm, a hydrogen car is one of the least efficient, most expensive ways to reduce greenhouse gases. Asked when hydrogen cars will be broadly available, Rom replied, 
not in our lifetime, and very possibly never. The Los Angeles Times wrote, in 2009, hydrogen fuel cell technology won't work in cars. Any way you look at it, hydrogen is a lousy way to move cars. The Economist magazine, in 2008, quoted Robert Zubrin, the author of Energy Victory, as saying, hydrogen is just about the worst possible vehicle fuel. The magazine noted the withdrawal of California from earlier goals. In 2008 the California Air Resources Board, an agency of California's state government and a bellwether for state governments across America, changed its requirement for the number of zero-emission vehicles to be built and sold in California between 2012 and 2014. The revised mandate allows manufacturers to comply with the rules by building more battery electric cars instead of fuel cell vehicles. The magazine also noted that most hydrogen is produced through steam reformation, which creates at least as much emission of carbon per mile as some of today's gasoline cars. On the other hand, if the hydrogen could be produced using renewable energy, it would surely be easier simply to use this energy to charge the batteries of all electric or plug-in hybrid vehicles. A 2009 study at UC Davis, published in the Journal of Power Sources, similarly found that, over their lifetimes, hydrogen vehicles will emit more carbon than gasoline vehicles. This agrees with a 2014 analysis. The Washington Post asked in 2009. W. Hi, would you want to store energy in the form of hydrogen and then use that hydrogen to produce electricity for a motor, when electrical energy is already waiting to be sucked out of sockets all over America and stored in auto batteries? The Motley Fool stated in 2013 that, There are still cost prohibitive obstacles for hydrogen cars relating to transportation, storage, and, most importantly, production. Volkswagen's Rudolf Krebs said in 2013 that, No matter how excellent you make the cars themselves, the laws of physics hinder their overall efficiency. The most efficient way to convert energy to mobility is electricity. He elaborated, Hydrogen mobility only makes sense if you use green energy. But, You need to convert it first into hydrogen. With low efficiencies. Where you lose about 40% of the initial energy. You then must compress the hydrogen and store it under high pressure in tanks, which uses more energy. And then you have to convert the hydrogen back to electricity in a fuel cell with another efficiency loss. Krebs continued, in the end, from your original 100% of electric energy, you end up with 30 to 40%. The Business Insider commented, pure hydrogen can be industrially derived, but it takes energy. If that energy does not come from renewable sources, then fuel cell cars are not as clean as they seem. Another challenge is the lack of infrastructure. Gas stations need to invest in the ability to refuel hydrogen tanks before FCEVs fuel cell electric vehicles become practical, and it's unlikely many will do that while there are so few customers on the road today. Compounding the lack of infrastructure is the high cost of the technology. Fuel cells are still very, very expensive. In 2014, Joseph Rahm devoted three articles to updating his critiques of hydrogen vehicles. He stated that fuel cell vehicles still have not overcome the following issues, high cost of the vehicles, high fueling cost, and a lack of fuel delivery infrastructure. It would take several miracles to overcome all of those problems simultaneously in the coming decades. Moreover, he wrote, FCVs aren't green. Because of escaping methane during natural gas extraction and when hydrogen is produced, as 95% of it is, using the steam reforming process. He concluded that renewable energy cannot economically be used to make hydrogen for an FCV fleet, either now or in the future. Greentech Media's analyst reached similar conclusions in 2014.
In 2015, Clean Technica listed some of the disadvantages of hydrogen fuel cell vehicles as did Car Throttle. Another Clean Technica writer concluded that while hydrogen may have a part to play in the world of energy storage especially seasonal storage, it looks like a dead end when it comes to mainstream vehicles. A 2016 study in the November issue of the journal Energy by scientists at Stanford University and the Technical University of Munich concluded that, even assuming local hydrogen production, Investing in all-electric battery vehicles is a more economical choice for reducing carbon dioxide emissions, primarily due to their lower cost and significantly higher energy efficiency. A 2017 analysis published in Green Car Reports concluded that the best hydrogen fuel cell vehicles consume more than three times more electricity per mile than an electric vehicle generate more greenhouse gas emissions than other powertrain technologies and have very high fuel costs. Considering all the obstacles and requirements for new infrastructure estimated to cost as much as $400 billion, fuel cell vehicles seem likely to be a niche technology at best, with little impact on U.S. oil consumption. The U.S. Department of Energy agrees, for fuel produced by grid electricity via electrolysis, but not for most other pathways for generation. Argonne National Laboratory developed a model of these emission pathways, to communicate the impact of potential fuel cell vehicle advantages and disadvantages. In 2017, Michael Barnard, writing in Forbes, listed the continuing disadvantages of hydrogen fuel cell cars and concluded that By about 2008, it was very clear that hydrogen was and would be inferior to battery technology as a storage of energy for vehicles. B. Y. 2025 The last holdouts should likely be retiring their fuel cell dreams. Topic. Comparison with other types of alternative fuel vehicle Hydrogen vehicles compete with various proposed alternatives to the modern fossil fuel-powered vehicle infrastructure. Plug-in hybrids Plug-in hybrid electric vehicles, or PHEVs, are hybrid vehicles that can be plugged into the electric grid and contain an electric motor and also an internal combustion engine. The PHEV concept augments standard hybrid electric vehicles with the ability to recharge their batteries from an external source, enabling increased use of the vehicle's electric motors while reducing their reliance on internal combustion engines. The infrastructure required to charge PHEVs is already in place, and transmission of power from grid to car is about 93% efficient. This, however, is not the only energy loss in transferring power from grid to wheels. AC-DC conversion must take place from the grid's AC supply to the PHEV's DC. This is roughly 98% efficient. The battery then must be charged. As of 2007, the lithium iron phosphate battery was between 80 to 90% efficient in charging, discharging. The battery needs to be cooled. The GM Volts battery has four coolers and two radiators. As of 2009, the total well to wheels efficiency with which a hydrogen fuel cell vehicle might utilize renewable electricity is roughly 20%, although that number could rise to 25% or a little higher with the kind of multiple technology breakthroughs required to enable a hydrogen economy. The well to wheels efficiency of charging an onboard battery and then discharging it to run an electric motor in a PHEV or EV, however, is 80% and could be higher in the future four times more efficient than current hydrogen fuel cell vehicle pathways. A 2006 article in Scientific American argued that PHEVs, rather than hydrogen vehicles, would become standard in the automobile industry. 
A December 2009 study at UC Davis found that, over their lifetimes, PHEVs will emit less carbon than current vehicles, while hydrogen cars will emit more carbon than gasoline vehicles. Topic. Natural gas Internal combustion engine-based compressed natural gas CNG, HCNG or LNG vehicles natural gas vehicles or NGVs use methane natural gas or biogas directly as a fuel source. Natural gas has a higher energy density than hydrogen gas. NGVs using biogas are nearly carbon neutral. Unlike hydrogen vehicles, CNG vehicles have been available for many years, and there is sufficient infrastructure to provide both commercial and home refueling stations. Worldwide, there were 14.8 million natural gas vehicles by the end of 2011. The other use for natural gas is in steam reforming which is the common way to produce hydrogen gas for use in electric cars with fuel cells. All-electric vehicles A 2008 technology review article stated, "...electric cars—and plug-in hybrid cars—have an enormous advantage over hydrogen fuel cell vehicles in utilizing low-carbon electricity." That is because of the inherent inefficiency of the entire hydrogen fueling process, from generating the hydrogen with that electricity to transporting this diffuse gas long distances, getting the hydrogen in the car, and then running it through a fuel cell—all for the purpose of converting the hydrogen back into electricity to drive the same exact electric motor you'll find in an electric car. Thermodynamically, each additional step in the conversion process decreases the overall efficiency of the process. A 2013 comparison of hydrogen and battery electric vehicles agreed with the 25% figure from Ulf Bossel in 2006 and stated that the cost of an electric vehicle battery is rapidly coming down, and the gap will widen further. While there is little Existing infrastructure to transport, store and deliver hydrogen to vehicles and would cost billions of dollars to put into place, everyone's household power sockets are. Electric vehicle refueling. Station and the. Cost of electricity, depending on the source, is at least 75% cheaper than hydrogen. By 2018, the cost of EV batteries had fallen to below $150 per kilowatt hour. Some electric car designs offer limited driving range, causing range anxiety. For example, the 2013 Nissan Leaf had a range of 75 miles, 121 kilometers. Other EVs, such as the Tesla Model S, have a range of more than 300 miles, 480 kilometers. Most U.S. commutes are 30 to 40 miles 48 to 64 kilometers per day round trip, and in Europe, most commutes are around 20 kilometers 12 miles round trip. In 2013 John Swanton of the California Air Resources Board, who sees EVs and hydrogen vehicles as complementary technologies, stated that EVs have the jump on fuel cell autos, which are like electric vehicles were 10 years ago. EVs are for real consumers, no strings attached. With EVs you have a lot of infrastructure in place. The Business Insider, in 2013 commented that if the energy to produce hydrogen does not come from renewable sources, then fuel cell cars are not as clean as they seem. Gas stations need to invest in the ability to refuel hydrogen tanks before FCEVs become practical, and it's unlikely many will do that while there are so few customers on the road today. Compounding the lack of infrastructure is the high cost of the technology. Fuel cells are still very, very expensive, even compared to battery-powered EVs equals equals see also